In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to customize the player in Articulate Presenter. So what I want to do is go to the Articulate tab, click on the player, and that's going to open up the player dialog. And so I've got my player properties here. And what you'll notice is I've got all my options here. And then this always gives me a live preview of the player. And you can see it actually works, right? I mean, there's no content in there, but you can see the player works. I can see um, how that would work. So uh, what we can do now is customize the player. So a few things you can do is you can customize the features. So here's a list of all your features, and then you can turn those on or off or move them around, and you'll see it live preview. Uh, we've got our menu, so I can customize the menu here. I can add resources. I can have a simple glossary where I can add terms and a definition and just make that part of my player. And then I've got my ability to customize the colors. So let's look at the features first. And when you do your own um, course building, you can click and play around with these things. But I'll just show you a few things. Um, one is I might not have resources. So if I don't have resources, I don't want to have a resource tab, right? Because that might be confusing. People may think that something's broken if there's a tab there, but there's no content in it. So I want to turn that off. So I can come over here to player tabs. I can just turn the resources off. All right, add an exit button so you can see how that works. You'll notice I have a side menu. Um, I may not want the menu on this side. I may want it on the other. So I can come down here to the sidebar, go from left to right. And now um, I've gone from a boring e-learning course to one that's very exciting because it's the menus on the other side. Uh, and then I can go uh, back to the other side. But let's say I don't want the menu this way. Maybe I want a drop down menu. So I just want to have a sleeker profile on my course and just not have a sidebar menu. I can do that as well. Uh, you'll notice here on the tabs that menu is one of the selections. If I deselect it, um, it's gone. You'll notice the presenter stuff is still there. So I need to turn that off. But once I deselect it, there's no reason to have a sidebar. And so now I've got a sleeker profile where it's just kind of a slide only. And let's say I do want the menu on there. I can select it. Now here's a bonus tip. I usually deselect them before I move. And the reason is if I select this, see it has to redraw the player. And then I move it up. Then it has to redraw it. And then I move it again. It has to re kind of build that player. So what I typically like to do is I'll just turn it off and then I move it into position. So in this case, it's going to be right up here on the left. And then I can select it and then it's there for me. I don't have to wait for it to constantly redraw. And now I've got my menu available to me, but it's not um, taking up my screen space. So I kind of like that look. Uh, and you can customize the title and do some other things, turn things on and off. Uh, so just play around with those and, and see what you can do. Uh, let's look at the menu. When you're at the menu, um, the menu is like your table of contents. So you can say, well, I don't want, let's say I have animated boxes, but I want these other things right here to be subsets. So I can select an object and you can see I can make it a subset, right? So now all of a sudden, um, these are subsets, so it's all closed up and I can open it up. I've got my subsets. Let's say I want to have the QuizMaker file. Oops, I want the QuizMaker file in my course, but I don't want it to be visible on the menu. All I have to do is delete it. So I hit delete and it's gone. Now if I want to restore it, I can restore uh, my menu right here. So I can reset it from the presentation. And you'll see it's going to reset everything the way it was uh, by default. Um, so you can play around with that. You can uh, double click on the titles and change them. So I don't need to say engage. I can just say accordion uh, interaction if I want to. Um, oops. I could, uh, you know, call this um, knowledge check uh, rather than quiz, you know, so whatever I want to do. So you can see, and then I get a real time update. Let's say I don't want the numbering. Uh, there's things you can do, like I can change some options here, uh, my navigation. Let's say I don't want numbering, so I can turn that off, hit OK, and then all I'm going to get is the titles. There's so a lot of neat things you can do uh, to customize that. Uh, resources, if you want to add resources, you can add those to that. Just make sure, again, it's enabled 
as a feature here. Glossary, you can add a term and then a simple definition. It's not a really complex glossary, but if you want a, just a simple one with terms and definitions, it's a good one. Otherwise, you can use the Engage uh, Glossary Interaction if you want to build out something a little bit more dynamic. And then, of course, you can change the color scheme. So you can do some quick color schemes here, right, like this. Or you can do the advanced color scheming, and then you can have complete control and get it to look exactly like you want it to look uh, for your brand. Now, sometimes there's a resource available in the community that will help you with that. If I'm not sure what color does what, I'll just like like yellow and then I can see uh, what gets changed on there and then I'll go ahead and uh, make my changes. A lot of neat things you can do in there so you can modify the features, your menu, resources, glossary and colors and then when you're done just go ahead and save that.